we would like to explain what uh, A being congruent to B mod N means in general, what congruences between integer numbers are. So let's give, let's start with a little bit of notation. So we denote by N the set of natural numbers, one, two, three, and so on. These are all the positive integers. By Z, the set of all integer numbers, including zero and all the uh, opposites of natural numbers. And we recall uh, the uh, definition of Euclidean division which is uh, we start with a number n, a natural number n. So uh, let n be a natural number. And a be an integer number. then we can write uh, a as n times u plus r, where u is an integer number. Uh, this symbol means belongs to or belonging to. And R is also an integer number with a requirement that is greater than or equal to zero and less than N. In this case, we call N the divisor. Uh, A is the dividend. Uh, U is the result. And R is the remainder. So of course, some examples are in order here. So for example, if we want to divide uh, 10 by three and we ask what the result is, meaning how many times does uh, three fit into 10, integer amount of times, then it's uh, three times and the remainder is one. Uh, or we can ask uh, how about 20, and seven, so seven is the divisor. How many times does seven fit into 20? Two times, uh, and the remainder is six. It gets a little trickier when you try to do it with negative numbers. So uh, if you want to do, for example, negative 15 and the divisor is six, most people would uh, say here that uh, it's six times negative three, negative 12 minus uh, three, except there is a problem with this we said specifically that the remainder should be between zero and um, uh, n. So the only way to achieve this is if the result is actually uh, negative uh, three and the remainder is actually three. So um, let's do one more of this. So how about uh, negative 20 and seven actually this is in uh, good contrast with uh, what we just did a moment ago. So now what we should do is uh, do negative three times seven. Uh, that lands us at negative 21 and then the remainder is one in order to go to negative 20. So um, if we fix, If we fix n, and usually it's fixed in this business, a natural number, then we say that a comma b are congruent modulo n if they have the same remainder in the uh, 
way that we just described. When divided by n. Uh, here, of course, a and b are supposed to be uh, integer numbers. And uh, as an example, or we should say first that uh, in this case, we write uh, exactly what we said in the very beginning, that uh, a is concurrent to b mod n. Uh, please note that here, sometimes we put it parentheses, other times we don't put the parentheses. And uh, let's give an example. So uh, suppose that n is five, uh, then uh, 22 is congruent to 37 mod five. Uh, why is that? Think about it. 22 is five times four plus two, so the remainder is two. And 37 is five times seven plus remainder also two. So they're congruent. Uh, classically, uh, the definition of congruence is given uh, by a slight different equivalent condition. Uh, and in fact, we would like to give um, one more condition. So we can say the following are equivalent. So uh, equivalent for a comma b in z and n in n. So we have uh, two real uh, two uh, integer numbers and one fixed natural number that is going to act as our divisor. Uh, a comma b have the same remainder. when divided by n, which is pretty much the definition that we just gave for uh, the two numbers being congruent modulo n. Uh, n divides a minus b. So, so here we should uh, specify that what we mean by n divides a minus b means that a minus b is n times some integer number k. Okay, that's what divisibility means. And uh, a third condition is that one can go from A to B, and conversely, of course, by steps of length n. So for example, uh, look at uh, 22 and 37. If you take the difference 22 minus 37, that's negative 15. And of course, this is divisible by uh, five. So what we just said would hold true. Also, start at 22. Uh, if you move by five, you go to 27. If you move by another five, you go to uh, 32. If you move by another five, you go to 37. And of course, you could execute this backwards. That is, you could go from 37 back to 32, back to 27, back to 22. So all of these string descriptions are equivalent. And they all establish that A is congruent to B mod N. Uh, notice that if n is equal to 1, then all integers are congruent to uh, each other. If n is equal to 2, then uh, the uh, integers that are congruent to 0 are precisely the even integers. So uh, a is congruent to 0 mod 2, if and only if. Remember, if and only if can be written as if with two f's, right? Uh, a is even. And A is congruent to one mod two, uh, if and only if A is 
add. And with this, uh, we finish our brief introduction to uh, congruencies of integer numbers with respect to a uh, natural modulus. Thanks for watching.